attempt at this point of time by Chandrayaan 2. We're just moments away before the Chandrayaan 2's lander, which is known as Vikram, will attempt to soft land on the surface of the moon. We'll getting you minute by minute updates as they unfold. This is, of course, one of those moments where anyone who is a space enthusiast, it's one o'clock in the morning in India, but no one would have slept. Anyone who has an interest in space, this is the moment. And this is, of course, a culmination of the efforts and hard work that the scientists of Israel have put in for many months and years. And India, of course, is looking to create history by becoming the first nation to reach closest to the moon's southern pole. The Chandrayaan-2 moon mission is scheduled to land on the lunar surface roughly at about 1.55 a.m. But there is an interim period of about 15 minutes that has been described as the ISRO chairman as 15 minutes of terror. It is this time when the lander that is presently hurtling through space at a speed of 36,000 kilometers per hour, this will be slowed down and brought to zero. It will completely lose its velocity as it slowly touches down onto the surface of the moon. Now, Vikram, of course, got separated from the orbiting mothership and has performed two maneuvers to lower its altitude for a perfect touchdown. The rover Pragyan, one of the most important aspects of this mission, will then roll out from the moon lander, roughly at about 5.30 a.m. or 6.30 a.m. And then India will, uh, at India time, and will carry out research on the surface of the moon by mapping its resources. We'll of course be getting you all the updates as they emerge and we're also joined in, in our studio by Mr. Ratan Srivastava who is a aerospace industry expert. Thank you very much indeed sir for joining us on this broadcast. It's one o'clock in the wee hours of the morning but like we just said no one who is interested in space is sleeping at this point of time. Absolutely. This is the time to be awake. This day does not come every time. It is a red letter day for all the space industry enthusiasts as space experts as well, not only in India, all over the world. Mm -hmm. So I would say that everybody in the world is awake and Jeff Bezos has just... We just saw his tweet, we yeah, just saw he Jeff did, he, Bezos, he, he, he's got his blue origins, I mean he wants, he's the richest businessman in the world and he's watching this and, and he's got his eyes set to see what India is going to achieve in the next few months. Absolutely, so anyone who's passionate about space has no business sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> I think that that is very well put. But you know, on, on a more serious note, this is the most complex mission that ISRO has attempted. We heard from K7, the chairman of ISRO, he sounded very confident. He said that, look, we have done our homework. We expect that India will be able to soft land on the surface of the moon and it will be able to do so in its first attempt. Do you think that confidence is justified? I think that confidence is justified because uh, I take... Uh comfort from the fact that we were able to land on Mars also for the first time. Mm -hmm. There have been countries who have done 30 odd attempts and they have not been able to land. Absolutely. And India has taken a lesson from all the uh, landings that we ha have failed and we have analyzed them. We have done those iterations many times over in a facility near Bangalore, ISRO has a facility. Mm -hmm. uh, we have done all those, uh, I would say, um, experiments. Yep. And that's one of the reasons that it got delayed a bit as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have tried to, um, what should I say, we have tried to bring the atmosphere of the moon on, on the earth by creating uh, certain simulations in which we have landed the lander and also used the rover. So I don't think uh, it would fail now. And God I mean, willing, one hopes that God it will fail because this, this, of course, is such a complex mission. Everyone is sitting on the edges of their seats. You know, we've got goosebumps as, as we watch this event unfold. It is history in the making. In just about another 40 moment of terror, the 15 minutes of terror, as K7, in fact, has described, that will unfold. It starts at acquired such an enormous amount of significance is that this will be the first time mm -hmm. that any nation the southern pole what what is the significance of the southern pole right Sally so uh, first thing is this that not many nations have done soft landing right the Bereshiva just now uh, the Israeli yep. uh, they crashed 
it's a very complex thing and uh, till now we have only had USSR, US and China. China beat us to it because uh, mm -hmm. Chandrayaan 2 got delayed after Chandrayaan 1. Possibly we would have been able to do the landing as the third nation to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, there were some reasons where, why we got delayed. There were funding issues and so on and so forth. But the fact is this that only three nations have done it and we'll be the fourth nation to do it. So that's very important. Yeah, but what is this fascination with the South Pole? So I mean, South because most of these other nations, right, they've done so it in the Northern Hemisphere and they've done it around the equatorial region of the Moon. Absolutely. So why South Pole? This is a very interesting question. Now, South Pole, because we, South Pole is an area which is till now not explored, not mapped. And no country till now has gone to the far side on the moon or what we say dark side of the moon or the, far, or the, or the shaded side of the moon. So this is an area which is shaded and the craters in this side of the moon have till now evidence, have given us evidence of ice. Ice which could be water and they have been, the Chandrayaan 1 has actually discovered conclusively the availability of ice. So first thing is ice and water which is very very important from scientific point of view, mm -hmm. uh, from the point of view of uh, future lunar missions right. and also maybe colonies. And then the other thing is the M-cube. M-cube was an ASA probe which is the moon mineralogy mapper. So that has also gone to that part of the moon and it has done some conclusive discoveries Chandrayaan, uh, sorry, Vikram and Ro, uh, the Pragyan would now further build on it. Absolutely. And absolutely, yeah. Yeah, do, we, will, we will dwell a yes. bit more in, you know, in terms of the many complex parts of this mission. Meanwhile, I'm told that we're also joined in by Dr. Anita Sen Gupta, who's a former NASA rocket scientist and an aerospace engineer. Dr. Sen Gupta, thank you very much indeed for joining us live on this broadcast in Vyond from the other side of the world. I'm sure that as a former NASA ro rocket scientist, you would of course be watching this mission very, very closely. But let me begin by asking you this. You know, this is by far one of the most complex missions that is being attempted. And it is said that, you know, the fact that India is doing it for the first time isn't just the fact that it is so hard. Even other nations that have been able to successfully accomplish a soft landing will, will attempt this with a lot of trepidation. What makes soft landings so hard? Well, it's so difficult because it can't be remotely controlled back from Earth. Everything has to be done autonomously and it has to be done with closed loop guidance, navigation and control, which means that the engines, the software, the sensors, the instrumentation all have to work perfectly the first time without any mistakes. So it's very difficult to do. All right, that, that is true. And, uh, you know, the other issue that I also want to talk to you about, uh, you know, India is attempting to do it as close to the South Pole as possible, 70 degree latitude in the Southern Hemisphere. W what is the significance of the Southern Pole that, that you know, a lot of people are talking about? So there's two aspects to the significance. One is that from Chandrayaan 1, we found that there's actually water, frozen water, in the southern polar region of the moon. So from a scientific perspective, this is really important to be able to interrogate that water, which we'll do with both the orbiter measurements as well as the lander and the rover measurements. The other aspect is future human exploration of Mars, and specifically NASA's Artemis mission, which is planned for the mid-2020s, is looking to send beings to the south pole of the moon. So the landing site assessment that the Vikram lander does um, by Israel will feed directly into the future human missions to the moon in the South Polar region. Absolutely indeed. And also, uh, Dr. Sen Gupta, do continue to stay on with us. We are getting live visuals from Bengaluru as the scientists are presently getting out for the final moments, the moment of truth. Pretty much everyone is sitting on the edges of their chair as everyone is... Exploration as the Vikram lander will begin to attempt the soft landing in roughly about 30 minutes from now. And the minute, uh, the 15 minutes of terror that K7 had spoken about, they will kick start by about 1.40. And by 1.55, one expects that India would have successfully managed to soft land on the moon. 
Um, now, now, Mr. Srivastava, if I can bring you in on this, you know, uh, Dr. Sengupta was there talking about, you know, how this can be such an important um, mission, not, not just in the fact that it is being attempted to the moon, but also for other scientific discoveries. Because in Chandrayaan-1, you know, not too many people expected that we'd be able to actually get evidence for the existence of water. Right. That was 10 years back, and now there are estimates that there could be as much as about 100 million tons of water on the poles of the moon. Absolutely. So, uh, as uh, Dr. Singupta said, and I also said earlier, the most important aspect is the discovery of water. And discovery of water is important not only from the point of view of future lunar missions, uh, maybe having a staging station for interplanetary missions, that is, we go from here to moon, and from moon we go to another interplanetary missions, uh, from the other, as well as for water to be used as a part of the fuel for fueling the future missions. Right. So that is very important. Until now, it has not been proved. Uh, to, uh, until Chandrayaan 1 did it, the probe did it. The other aspect is this, that India has a very good record of uh, cooperation with other nations' agencies, which is to say NASA or ESA or JAXA. And right. uh, for example, Japan has contributed towards the mapping of the Southern Pole, which is why we have decided that we will land at 70.9 degree south latitude and 22.8 degree or 23 degree uh, longitude. Mm -hmm. This has been decided because of the cooperation that we have with JAXA, and JAXA has done some mapping earlier. Absolutely, indeed. Do do continue to stay on with us, Mr. Srivastav. Let's let's also listen into some of the stuff that's that's actually happening at the ISTRAC facility in ISRO in Bengaluru. It looks fascinating. Deep Piman Sitara Chandrayaan 2 ke roop mein Parinati ke shikhar par pahunt chuka hai jis mein Chandrayaan 2 ke lander Vikram aur uske andar sanyojit rover Pragyan Chandrama ke dakshini dhruv par do kraitron Majini C aur Simpelis N ke beech mukh sambhavit avtarana chetra SLS Chauhan PLS-1, which is 70.9267 South Akshans or Latitude and 22.7811 East Puru, Deshantar or Longitude, and today, in the world's history, it will be joined in a new journey. I will tell you to tell you that in this Akshans and Deshantar, it will be joined in a new journey in this Akshans and Deshantar, it will be joined in a new journey in this पूर्व निर्धारित देशांकों निर्देशांकों सत्तर दशमलव आठ नौ 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 दो साउथ अक्षांश और बाईस दशमलव सात आठ एक एक पूर्वांतर देशांतर को लैंडर के कंप्यूटर को भेज दिया गया है so this is what is presently unfolding at the ISTRAC center within ISRO in Bengaluru and Mr. Srivastav you know we were talking about the importance and as to how you know, ISRO has also collaborated with some of the other space agencies as well. And as to why that is so crucial in, in carrying out such complex missions like this. So, Saleh, uh, it's extremely important that countries collaborate. Why they need to collaborate is this, that it is for the benefit of entire humanity. It is not for the benefit of a particular person or a particular country. So, when we are working towards when we are working towards cooperating with other countries, we are primarily understanding that future missions to the moon will have to be a collaborative effort. Mm -hmm. Space, we must understand, has no frontiers. Right? Absolutely. Absolutely. So we need to cooperate. If we have got some help from Jap Japanese, uh, we will help Americans. We have helped Americans. America has helped us. Uh, so this is something which is very important from the view of future missions to the moon, mm -hmm. especially in view of the 2024 manned mission after the last mission that America did. NASA is planning a manned mission to the moon to set foot again, have boots on ground yep. in 2024. And that boots on ground is going to be happening, interestingly, on the southern pole. That's exciting. I mean, that, that sounds and so that fascinating. Is, that, and that is going to actually, the building blocks for that mission would come from India. From Chandrayaan That's 2. Incredible. Vikram the information that, that India's Chandrayaan 2 Absolutely. will, of course, be used by NASA in its mission in the year 2024. As I said, collaborative.
Indeed. And uh, Dr. Sen Gupta, who is a former NASA rocket scientist, is still with us. Uh, now, Dr. Sen Gupta, one of the aspects that is being spoken about a lot in terms of the challenges is, is the dust on the surface of the moon. You know, at a time when, when the soft landing is attempted, there will be these boosters which, due to the thrust, will kick up a lot of dust. And one of the reasons as to why the rover will, in fact, come out of, of the lander after a duration of almost about four or five hours is, is because of this dust that had been kicked up. You know, why, why is the dust on the surface of the moon such a huge challenge? So there's two reasons for that. One is that there's no atmosphere on the moon, which is when if you have particles moving around on Earth, they experience aerodynamic drag, which slows them down. So eventually, if they have some energy, they'll get slowed down with drag and they'll settle on the surface. The other aspect is the gravity is much lower on the moon, which means that you also have less of a force of weight acting on them. So as a result, particles can attain really, really high velocities and can do a lot of damage to different surfaces. This is something that the Apollo astronauts faced. And this is something which all lunar surface missions faced. And it's also something that we faced during the landing of the Curiosity rover on Mars, although it wasn't as much of a problem because Mars has a thin atmosphere and the, the density of the atmosphere is a little bit higher and gravity is a little bit higher. But for the lunar environment, it's a huge challenge. Indeed. And, and, and what yeah. happens if, if the dust were to settle, let's say, on the solar panels that, that are there both on the Vikram lander and, and also on the Pragyan rover? I mean, how, how do scientists get around clearing off the dust from the solar panels then? So it's most likely the case that the engineers at ISRO have designed the solar panels to have enough energy such that given a certain percentage of coverage, they still have sufficient power to be able to operate the rover. So there is a way to make an engineering assessment of how much dust you expect to deposit. And then you make sure if you have a large enough surface area to your solar panels to have sufficient power even in spite of that. Indeed. And one of the other aspects, Dr. Sengupta, that, that I'd want you to uh, weigh in on and, and something that a lot of people would be interested to know is, you know, the manner in which the lander is, is in fact slowed down. You know, the 15 minutes of terror that the ISRO chairman has spoken about at that point of time, the lander is in fact hurtling through space at a speed of 36,000 kilometers per hour and in a span of 15 minutes that has virtually got to be brought down to zero. How, how is this attempted, considering the fact that Moon does not even have an atmosphere, or at least the atmosphere in the way that we understand to speak of? Yes, so doing entry, descent, and landing on the Moon is very different from re-entering the Earth's atmosphere and very different from entering Mars's atmosphere, which is something I know a little bit about. So the way it's done in the absence of any atmospheric deceleration is purely with retro propulsion. And specifically, there's a total of five um, rocket motors, which are on the base of the lander, that operate to slow the vehicle down. First, they do a rough braking phase to slow it down, and then they shift over to a refinement phase and eventually a final touchdown phase when they're only operating on a single engine for retro propulsion. Absolutely, indeed. That, that, that is a crucial aspect. And uh, Mr. Srivastava, if you can come in on this. You know, this is such a complex mission. And, and looking at the many things that need to go right. You know, the fact of the matter is there are five boosters. And these, these have been shut for almost a period of about two months. And they have to now come on for this slowdown to take place. How does this work? So, uh, I think they're not boosters, they're engines. Mm -hmm. They're four engines and uh, these four engines are going to work in a in not together, right? So initially when the deceleration is happening and the uh, Vikram lander is, along with the rover is coming in a parabolic fashion down uh, towards the last about 35 odd meters, this would be using the four engines. Mm -hmm. Now after that period when they are going to decide where they're going to land, because if you continue using four engines, there's a possibility of instability of the craft. Right. The craft may not be able to, you know, uh, land in the manner that it's supposed to land. That is to come down with a, uh, to, to the surface that it is supposed to land between those two craters or whichever place they decide. So once the, it comes to the final stages of landing, the final stages of landing would only have the central engine, which is the fifth engine right. working to decelerate and come down uh, to the surface of the moon. Absolutely indeed. That, that of course is something you know that a lot of people are of course looking at as, as these crucial minutes tick. And Dr. Sengupta, you know, uh, this, this is such a complex mission and Israel just in the month of April while it was trying to do its soft landing on the moon actually failed. Um, and 
here India is trying to, in its very first attempt, to try and succeed, um, you know, in this soft landing. Uh, you know, the question that a lot of people, of course, would ask, and this is something that I've asked you before as well, you know, why is it that soft landing is such a big deal and India, if it succeeds, will become only the fourth nation to have successfully done, those, done so? So there's so many reasons why it's complicated. The primary reason, of course, is you're trying to dissipate an incredible amount of energy, an incredible amount of speed in a really short period of time. In addition to that, you have to make sure the vehicle is oriented correctly. You have to control its altitude, its speed, its horizontal speed, and target it to a place on the surface which is safe to land. And the Israel lander, Vikram, has a series of instrumentation on board which facilitates that, from a laser altimeter to KVM radars to a landing camera which actually takes images of the surface. Um, to help it identify where it needs to be, as well as a camera which also takes images to prevent avoiding hazards on the surface. This is one of the most sophisticated landing systems I've ever seen. Absolutely, indeed. And also, you know, uh, I would like you to weigh in a little bit about, you know, what happens once the lander is on the ground, on the moon. The rover will be dispatched in, in four or five hours from then. We, we expect that it will... Uh, you know, come out at about 5.30 a.m. Indian Standard Time. Now, there are several experiments that the rover has been charged uh, to carry out. Um, you know, as, as a scientist who has worked in this field, you know, what, what are scientists actually looking for, for this rover to accomplish? So there's a suite of experiments on the lander as well as on the rover. And so some of the really interesting experiments that are on the lander is actually take a look at sort of the subsurface thermosynthetic physical properties to understand better how the interior of the moon works. There's also another instrument which makes measurements of the plasma just above the surface of the moon, which people don't know that much about. And there's also another instrument on the lander which makes measurements of seismic activity or moonquakes.